Hi again, Mr. Wakefield here. Welcome back. And uh, we're getting near the end of the final packet here, our final worksheet packet. And our topic right now is mixture problems. Mixture problems are going to come in two different types, okay? And so we're going to have two different videos um, based on the types that we have. This video, we're actually just going to do a couple of problems. We're then going to skip a problem down here, number three. We're going to skip this one, all right? And so you can just say skip right there. And then the last five problems, this problem along with the four problems on the next page, that will be in a second video. Okay, so we're just going to do two problems here in this first video. Uh, and uh, it involves when you mix together two different things that have what we call a percentage subquantity. Okay, a percentage subquantity. Let me explain what that means. Uh, the way that I want to explain that is to first of all look at this right here in the first problem. See where it says 80 gallons of 20% antifreeze. Okay, let me show you a picture of that. All right, and please don't pay attention to this whole picture yet. I'll get to what the rest of this picture means here in a second. But what we're basically doing here is we're taking these two jars of liquid right here. Okay, think of these as two different jars of liquid, and we're going to mix them together into a mixture down here. That's why you see the arrows right there. Uh, and so, um, what does 80 gallons of 20% antifreeze mean? It means that uh, you have a jar of liquid. 20% uh, of that is antifreeze. Antifreeze, by the way, if you're not familiar, it's the stuff that you put inside of a car to help it uh, deal with really cold temperatures, okay, if there's really cold temperatures outside. Um, so the way they make it is uh, it's not the whole the whole jar of liquid is not that you buy it you know the whole jar of liquid that you buy at say the auto parts store or whatever it's not going to be a hundred percent antifreeze okay there's going to be some other types of things in there like chemicals or water or other things you put inside of a liquid that's what the rest of it's going to be here but twenty percent of it's going to be antifreeze okay so what I want to uh, talk to you about is how do we uh, how do we deal with that here what does all this mean well first of all when they say 80 gallons of 20 percent antifreeze they mean this they mean that the entire jar of liquid is 80 gallons they don't mean that the antifreeze only is 80 gallons okay if they if they wanted uh, just the antifreeze only to be 80 gallons just this amount if they if they were trying to tell you that this this little tiny amount was 80 then they would have said 80 gallons of antifreeze 80 gallons of antifreeze all right but that's not what they said they said 80 gallons of 20 percent antifreeze so when they put that percentage there all right where they say 80 gallons of 20 percent antifreeze instead of just looking at the uh, antifreeze only um then they're referring to the whole jar of liquid being 80 all right um so like for example if they had said hey there's uh and i'm not saying this is true but this is just pretending here if they had said that the antifreeze was 10 gallons notice what i said there the antifreeze not the 20 percent antifreeze but the antifreeze is 10 gallons then this little amount would be 10 all right but if they say that there's 80 gallons of 20 percent antifreeze again that's referring to the whole thing because they put that percentage in front of the word antifreeze there okay um let's now take a look at the whole problem now uh it says how many gallons of 50 percent antifreeze okay so Again, it did not say how many gallons of antifreeze. It said how many gallons of 50% antifreeze. So that means that they are looking at the entire jar here, 50% of which is antifreeze. The other 50% up here is, you know, water or chemicals or whatever else that they put in there. Okay. Uh, but since that's the question, notice that's the question they asked us here. Okay. What do we do when we have a question? We use a, a variable to indicate that, right? Okay, I'll write that down here in the actual problem here. You don't have to write this down, although I do recommend it because the picture does help you understand better what's going on. That's why I'm doing the picture here on this separate sheet of paper. But um, we'll get to the actual problem where we write the stuff down here in just a moment. So they're saying how many gallons of 50% antifreeze, that's this amount, we'll call it X, must be mixed with 80 gallons of... 20% antifreeze, that's this jar over here. So we've got this jar being mixed with this jar to, uh, to do what? 
to obtain a mixture, that's why it's going to come down here, to obtain a mixture that's 40% antifreeze. And that's why it says 40% right there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take these two jars, mix them together to be this jar. I know this jar doesn't look like it's big enough for the mixture, but um, that's just my picture, okay? Uh, you can make it bigger if you want. Anyway, um, but that's what we do. So, again, just like we always do, and then I'll show you how to set this up. It's going to be a little bit different than the last video, but we're still going to use those, you know, the rows and columns that set up like we did before. Uh, but it's just going to be a little bit bigger this time. But the question was what? It said, uh, how many gallons of 50% antifreeze? So the question is, is uh, in other words, your X is going to be the gallons of 50% antifreeze. That's the question. That's the only question. And you so, so you only need one variable, okay? Uh, and that is X right there. You can use any variable you want. Now, step number three. Um, here's how it works, okay? We have a formula for this uh, called, and it says total amount of quantity. I'm going to shorten it here. Total amount of quantity times the percentage of the subquantity equals the amount of the subquantity. Let me show you what that means. Okay, let me just look at this box right here, this liquid as an example. We don't need to look at all three because we'll eventually uh, look at all three here anyway. But uh, when they say that there, and I'm going to shorten this, I'm going to say T times P equal to A. T for total, P for percentage, A for amount. Okay, what does that mean? This means that the T means the total amount in the entire jar. So that would be 80 here, right? Okay, so T times P equal to A. Again, I'm just looking at this one over here, not the other two uh, liquids yet. All right. T times P equal to A. The T is the total amount in the jar. The percentage is, well, that's self-explanatory. It's a 20%, right? Okay, since we're looking at this liquid right now. Remember I mentioned in a previous video, though, you guys, you can't put percentages inside of an equation. We have to convert it to a decimal. All right, and we talked about how to do that in a previous video uh, where we, uh, let me uh, remind you of that here. Actually, I have it right here. I had it right in front of me the whole time here. Um, let me go back to that. Okay, here we go. When we were talking about percentages before, we converted it to decimals, all right? And we did that by dividing uh, by 100 because that's what the percent symbol means. It means 18 divided by 100. 12 divided by 100. If you do that in your calculator, it gave you these two decimals. We're going to do the same thing here. Okay, if you do 20%, that means 20 divided by 100, and that's going to be, in your calculator, 0.20. Okay, now we don't know what the amount is, but what, what, is the, what is the amount representing? The amount is always this little thing that I was talking about earlier. This little thing right here where the, just the antifreeze is located, that little amount, not the water and the chemicals up here, but just the antifreeze, that is the A. So how do we figure out what the A thing is equal to here? We multiply, right? Okay, T times P equal to A. So what is 80 times 0.20 in your calculator? Don't forget the decimal point there. Uh, that is going to be 16. And so that means that since this was 80 gallons, this has to be 16 gallons. It's always going to be the same unit of measurement. So if this is gallons, this is gallons, all right? And I'm going to incorporate this thing right here that I just wrote down into my uh, problem here in just a moment. I just wanted you to see how the formula works. So that's TPA. So because we have three parts to the formula, just like we did in, previous, uh, in the previous uh, worksheet when we did motion problems, uh, we're going to have... Um, we're going to have three columns again, just like we did in the last worksheet. Okay. Let me put a paper underneath here. Just a minute. There we go. So um, we're going to have three columns again, but this time we're going to have three rows also. Okay. We're going to have three rows. And the reason why we're going to have three rows is because we are we have three different jars of liquid here, don't we? So we're going to have a row for each one. Make sure to put the mixture on the bottom, though. Okay, um, so we are mixing what? We're mixing together to 
the 50% antifreeze and the 20% antifreeze, and then the mixture is the 40%. I can, you can call it mixture if you want, or you can call it 40%. It's the same thing, okay? Um, so 50 and 20 get mixed together to equal the 40. The formula, just like in the last video, has the three parts, and so you write it just like that. We're not going to change the order like we sometimes did in the last video. It's just TPA, okay? And it's multiplication here. All right, so what we do, just like in the last video, is we start out with the first column and we work our way over. Okay, that's how you want to do it. And so let's start out with that first column. The first column says T. What does T mean again, you guys? It is the, the whole amount here. Okay, not the little amount. That's the A. It's the entire amount here. Okay, so for the 50%, that would be X, wouldn't it? So I put an X here. For the 20%, that would be 80 for the entire amount. So we put the 80 here. Okay, now, when you get down to the last box, when you have one of these three-row problems, you guys, okay, we didn't have three rows in the last video, so that's different. But when we have one of these three-row problems where mixture's on the bottom, what you can do, and you can only do this on the first column and the third column. Don't worry, I'll say that more than once, all right? Uh, but... Uh, um, on the first column and the third column, if you already know what this box is equal to, like I've said before, if you already know what a box is equal to, put it in there. Like if you knew that that was 120 or 150, then put it in there. If you don't know what it's equal to, but you have a variable for it, which we don't because our, our variable is only meant to be this up here, not this down here. But if you did, then you'd put that in there. But... If we don't, if neither one of those things is true, how do you then fill in this box here? Okay, well, in the past, uh, in the past, in the previous video, we said that you can fill it in by multiplying across. But this is not one of those boxes where you can multiply across, though, because it's not over here. It's uh, still over here in the first column. But like I said, you're allowed to add down. So if you don't know what this thing is equal to, what this box is equal to, and you don't have a variable for it, you're allowed to add down. Remember, X and 80 are not like terms, you guys, so don't try to combine them. X plus 80 is just X plus 80. Okay, it's not 80X. you got to have the plus in between it since they're not like terms. And you're supposed we're not multiplying down, you guys. We add down. We multiply across because this says multiplication, but we add down on the first column and the third column. As you'll see here in a minute, it won't make sense to add down on the second one, but we do do that on the first and the third column. Speaking of the second column, the second column is the percentages. So we take our three percentages, 50, 20, and 40, and what we do is we put them in our calculator and we say 50 divided by 100, 20 divided by 100, and 40 divided by 100 since 40% was in the mixture. And those are the three decimals that you get. Again, you want to convert these to decimals by dividing by 100 because eventually these things are going to go inside of an equation and we don't want the percentage symbol inside of an equation. Once again, we don't know anything about the amounts, which are these little amounts right here. These little amounts, we don't know anything about them. We've already used up our variable on something else. So, like I said, um, the... Uh, the only way that we can fill in that last column when that happens is to multiply across, just like we do with the motion problems. X times 0.50 is 0.50X. All right. 80 times 0.20, as we found out a minute ago, was 16. And finally, X plus 80 times 0.40. Let me give myself some room for that. That one's a little bit bigger. But uh, remember, when you multiply, you guys, by something that has two terms, in other words, two terms with a plus or minus in between it, you need to bracket that thing that has two terms in it, like that. Let me make this uh, column a little bit bigger just to help that fit. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so we multiply across then. All right, now remember what I just said. You can add down on the first and the third column. Okay, we were also allowed to multiply across. All right. Um, so how many equations do we need now that I've got my box set up, my, my you know, column and row box here set up? Just like in the last video, after we get it all set up with the boxes here, we then try to find an equation. We only need one because there's only one variable. 
Okay. Well, we know that we can add down on the first column, but that leads to what uh, I referred to in the last video as an identity. Okay. X plus 80 equal to X plus 80. You don't want that. Okay. That's not going to get you anywhere in a word problem. All right. That's just two things that are, I'm sorry, that came off the page there. That's just two things that are completely identical. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's not an equation that you're going to be able to find the answer from. We don't want that. Same thing when you multiply across. If I say x times 0.50 equal to 0.50x, I saw I mentioned something similar in the previous video. That's also an identity, all right? That's not going to get you anywhere, all right? We need something where it's the two sides aren't identical, but we still know that they're equal, all right? Isn't it true that if I add down on the third column, which I just told you you could do, okay, isn't it true that 0.50x plus 16 is equal to 0.40 times x plus 80. All right, that's not an identity. The two sides are not identical. All right, so that's gonna that looks like it's gonna work just as long as we're able to solve it. All right, and um, um, by the way, sometimes these identity equations sometimes they don't look completely identical, but they end up being that way. Um, Basically, if you try to solve an equation that's an identity, you guys, you, it's going to be one of those problems where the variables disappear while you're solving it, just to let you know in case you uh, don't notice right away that it's an identity. Okay, but that's not going to happen with this one, as you're going to see here in just a moment. Okay, so we only need one equation that has our variable in it. Okay, and so let's solve it now, and then we'll be done. Um, I need to distribute first. As we've seen all throughout these problems that uh, um, that are word problems here, um, they're either linear equations or they become linear equations, like after you get rid of a fraction or something like that. And so you do the normal linear steps. Okay, this this equation is no exception to that. All right. Uh, so in other words, you're not going to see quadratic equations if you do it right. Okay, in the word problems that is. So, um, because of that, I distribute first, and then I combine like terms, but there are no like terms. So then I now need to move over the terms that have x in it to one side, and I also need to move over the terms that don't have x in it to the other side. You can do that all at once here, just so long as it comes out the same as it would have if you had done it uh, in two separate steps. I'm okay with you skipping a step there, doing two steps in one. And you end up getting this right here. Again, be very careful with your decimals, you guys. That's the biggest mistake students make on these problems that have the decimals in it, is that when they put their decimals in the calculator, a lot of times they'll forget the decimal point or they'll put the decimal point in the wrong place and they get a completely different answer. Okay. Um, so if you do get an answer that's totally weird, and it doesn't mean we don't sometimes get weird looking answers, uh, but usually we don't. And so if you get a totally weird answer, it is possible that that's what happened. Maybe you just put a decimal point in the wrong place while you're going through the problem and you're computing some things. Okay, so j just keep that in mind. So we got what here? What is 16 divided by 0.10? That is 160. Now, as always, you guys, after we figure out what the variable is equal to, uh, since this problem does have measurement in it, gallons is an example of measurement. It tells you exactly how much uh, we have, for example, 80 gallons means that we know exactly what 80 is equal to. It's 80 gallons, not 80 ounces or 80 pints or anything like that. So we have measurement in this problem, and therefore the answer's got to have measurement. Is X also going to be gallons? Uh, yes, it is, because it tells us right here how many what? How many gallons? So we know that the answer is supposed to be in gallons. And so I'll say 160 gallons. And there's your final answer. So that's number one. You'll see that number two is very similar. Okay, it says a 90% acid solution must be mixed with a 75% acid solution to make 120 liters of a 78% acid solution. You'll notice, you guys, in all of these problems where you're mixing together two things that have a percentage attached to them to get a third thing that also has a percentage, that, th that mixture percentage is always going to be the percentage that's in between the other two. See how 40 is a number that's between 50 and 20? 
See how 78 is a number that's between 90 and 75? The the mixture uh, percentage will always be between those other two. And th so that'll just make it easier for you to see which one is which. Okay, another thing that uh, students struggle with sometimes in these problems is that they get confused on which one's the mixture. Which one of the three percentages is the mixture percentage? Well, it's always the one that's in the middle of the other two. Okay, 78 between 90 and 75, so that must be it. Okay, um, and they kind of mentioned that anyway because it says 90 must be mixed with 75 to make 78. So they kind of tell you anyway, but it's just an additional way of just being absolutely sure. Okay, um, but notice the question here. It says how many liters of 90% and 75% solution must be used? So what they're saying there is that Unlike the last problem, they want to know not only this amount, okay, they want to know this amount, and how do I know that? Because it says how many liters of the 90% solution. It does not say how many liters of acid, 90% acid solution, okay, it doesn't say how many liters of acid, that would be this amount here. No, it says how many liters of 90% acid solution. It's the fact they put that percentage in there that tells you that it's the whole jar, not just the 90% part. Okay, and then the other 10% is like water or chemicals or something like that. But it's the entire jar that they're asking for. They did not say how many liters of acid. They said how many liters of 90% acid solution. Okay, it's because of that percentage, you know it's the whole thing. So that's one of the questions. I'll put an X there. But it also asks for what? It says how many liters of the 75% acid solution. So again, because they put the percentage there, they're asking for the entire jar here. They're not just asking for this amount, okay, but the whole jar. Then. And so that's going to be my Y because, again, they're asking me two things here. And so I need to have two variables, right? <laughs> Excuse me. And so that's what they're asking us here. Let's go ahead and write that down. Again, you don't have to write down this picture, but you could if you want. Uh, like I said, it could help, help you understand better. Um, that's why I'm doing it here. So X and Y are what here? X and Y are, um, and be specific here, just so that there's absolutely no confusion, liters of what? The liters of the 90% acid solution. You just call it 90% acid for short, okay? But it's a... Uh, Liters, and then the other one is liters of 75% acid solution. I'll go and put, like I said, I want you to be as specific as possible, so I might as well put solution in there. Okay, so uh, there we go. Again, the more specific you are, the easier it is to be sure that you're putting your variables in the correct place in the problem. Okay, step three. Step three is where we draw our box, and again, when you are mixing together two things, that have a percentage subquantity. In this case, what is the percentage subquantity? What are we talking about there? Well, again, they're talking about when you have this jar of liquid, the percentage subquantity is the acid because it's 90% acid, 75% acid, 78% acid. So the percentage subquantity is the acid. All right. So you got the entire jar that also has some uh, water in there in addition to the acid but the acid is the subquantity. Just like in the last problem, it was the what? It was the antifreeze because it, that was what was attached to the percentage. Now it's the acid attached to the percentage. That's what is the subquantity. Okay, they're telling you there's 90% acid, 75% acid, and so on. All right. So that means that the three rows are going to be what? You always put the mixture row at the bottom, remember. So we put 90% and 75% in the first two rows. It does not matter which one is which here. You could put the 75% on top. What's important is that the mixture row is on the bottom. Otherwise, if, it's, if you don't put the mixture row on the bottom, then that thing where you add down on the first and the third row, um, that's not going to work. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, as I promised you guys, why can't I add down on the second row here? It's because this wouldn't even add up, right? Remember, this number's always got to be between these two numbers because the mixture percentage is always between these two, as I mentioned. And so it wouldn't make sense to add down there. Okay, But the first and the third column, they're different. 
Anyway, let's start filling in this box. Start out with the first column as always. All right. Um, notice that, again, T is the entire jar of liquid. So that here it would be X. In this one, it would be Y. That's the entire jar. And then let's uh, fill in. I, I haven't completely filled in this picture yet, and this will help us. Notice it mentions that there's 120 liters of the 78% acid solution. So doesn't that mean that this whole thing right here, because they said 78% acid, not just the acid only, but the 78% acid, that means the entire jar of liquid is 120. Okay, and so that means that the 120 goes here in this box. It's the total amount in that jar of liquid for the mixture down here. Is there anything else they tell us here? Uh, no, there's not. I've got, I just wanted to make sure I had all the information on my picture because, again, it makes it easier to be able to uh, fill in the boxes when the picture is completely filled in with all the information. Um, but, again, the picture is, is optional, though. Um, the percentages, 90 divided by 100, 0.90. 75 divided by 100, 0.75. And finally, 78 divided by 100, 0.78. By the way, you guys, don't be fooled into thinking that uh, you can just put the decimal next to the number. For example, in a homework problem, you're going to get something where it says 5%. That is not equal to 0.5, you guys. If you put that in your calculator, that's going to be 0.05. All right, so don't just automatically think that, oh, I just need to put the decimal point in front of the number. No, sometimes there's an additional zero in there, okay? And that, uh, that typically happens when it's just a single digit here, like five, or like if it was 8% or 6%, that happens, okay? So just to be safe, all right, put the, um, put the number in the calculator and make sure that you got the right decimal. Okay, as I mentioned before, uh, when we get to the last column, uh, unless you know what one of these three boxes is, which we don't, we don't know the, the actual smaller sub amounts here. Okay. We don't know those. Uh, we just know what the entire jar is here, X, Y, and 120. Uh, and we got that already in here. Uh, but, uh, we don't know those sub amounts. Um, we don't have a variable for it cause we used up our variables over here. So once again, my only option is what? My only option is to multiply across. Okay, uh, in order to fill that in. And so what does this lead me here? By the way, what is this uh, equal to here? 120 times um, 0.78. We need to put that in our calculator. And uh, because there's no variables there, I can actually put that in my calculator and figure this out. Uh, unlike up here where because you have variables, you just, you just multiplied it as it is. But this is going to be 93.8. Six, 93.6. And so um, because we have two variables, we need two equations. And I'm going to start figuring out those equations right now because they uh, because I've already filled in my boxes here. Notice here, you guys, that if I add down on the first column and the third column, both of those are normal equations, not identities, okay? X plus Y equal to 120. And then the other one is 0.90x plus 0.75y is equal to 93.6. And so therefore, um, we've got our two equations that we need. And they, remember, if you've got two variables, you need to come up with two equations that have both of your variables in them. We did that. Okay. And so now we can solve. I'm going to go ahead and use the substitution method here to solve this uh, the, this system of equations that we created here. Okay, remember you need to do either substitution or elimination if you have two equations in your word problem. Okay, um, and so uh, I'll go ahead and get the y by itself here. You can get the x by itself. It's just about the same as far as uh, it's just as easy either way. So I get the y by itself. I then plug it into the other equation here. And so it's going to look like this, 0.90x plus 0.75 times. And then I plug in the 120 minus x right here. Okay. And then I um, solve that equation, just like I always do with the, with the substitution method. 0.75 times 120 as I distribute this right here. I've got to distribute the 0.75 through the bracket. I get 90 uh, 
for 0.75 times 120, okay? And then I got um, negative 0.75x. And now I need to combine like terms. Let me move it up here. If I combine like terms, I get uh, 0.90 minus 0.75. Again, if you put that in your calculator, be very careful with the decimal point. Make sure you're putting it in the right place. But we end up getting 0.15x plus 90 is equal to 93.6. There we go. All right. And now I need to move over the 90 over to the other side. And that gives me 0.15x equal to 3.6. Okay. Lastly, I need to divide out, don't I? All right. To get the x by itself, right? What is 3.6 divided by 0.15 in your calculator? Isn't that going to be equal to 24? Okay, and so um, I then need to plug it back into this equation right here like I always do with the substitution method in order to figure out what the other variable is equal to. And so the final uh, answer there for y is going to be 96. Now remember what we said, okay, when you have two variables in your word problem, when you give the final answer, not only do you need to say what the unit of measurement is for these two numbers, but you also need to tell me which one's which. In other words, which one is the 90% and which one's the 75%. Just don't forget to do that. So, first of all, how are they measured? 24 and 96, it says here that they're both measured in liters. Okay, that's the unit of measurement. And so, I get 24 liters. I'll write it down over here. 24 liters and 96 liters. But which one is which here? Okay, which one is the 90% acid and which one's the 75% acid? Well, the 24 was the X, and so that must be the 90% the one. Okay, and so uh, what's important here is that uh, you just, uh, just to say 90% or 75%, I mentioned acid here as well. But what's important is that you tell me which one is which. All right. Um, again, you don't need to give me a complete sentence, all right? Just uh, enough for me to know that you understand which one's a 24 and which one's a 96, okay? All right, so that is problem number two. So that is going to wrap up this video, but before you go, I want to make sure that uh, uh, you understand that when we uh, see the homework, uh, I want to show you a few problems here just to kind of show you that there really is a close relationship between the two problems that we just did and the problems that we're going to do in the homework. All right, so just to get you off to a good start here on the homework. Um, so if you look at uh, number, here's the first problem I'm going to assign. Uh, how many ounces of 4% acid solution? How many ounces of the 10% acid solution? must be uh, mixed to make 24 ounces of a 6% acid solution. Okay. Uh, again, very important, you guys, that you realize um, which one is the mixture and which one's the which of the t other two are going to be mixed. All right. There's three percentages there, right? 4%, 10%, and 6%. Which one is the one that's the mixture? Well, it tells you that you must mix to make 6%, but we already know that 6% must be the mixture anyway because it's between 4 and 10, right? It's the middle number out of the three percentages, isn't it? So it must be the mixture anyway. All right, so ju that's just kind of, again, like I said earlier, that's just kind of an easy way of making sure that you know uh, what, the, um, what the mixture is, the mixture percentage. And so if you want to make a picture, you can. You don't have to. But uh, if you did, it would look something like this, where 6% is the mixture. But it's so important to know which one is the mixture just to, just to make it uh, easier to picture what's going on in the problem. Now, we had two different problems that we looked at just now All right, on the worksheet. One of them was... Uh, actually, let me look at the picture instead of going back to the worksheet. Let me show you the picture 
of uh, the problems that we did just from the picture perspective. Okay, the first problem, this was number one. We had a situation where they told us what one of the uh, total amounts was over here, and then they the X was here. All right, and then we had another one where both of the total amounts that you were mixing together were the variables because they asked for both of those things. So some problems, they're going to tell you what this one is, and then this is your only variable over here. You only have to figure out this one. And then there's some problems where they want you to figure out both of these. And so you need two equations and all that. Okay, and so you just need to be able to figure out uh, which uh, problem uh, you're dealing with. Now in this problem, notice that it says, it says how many ounces of four and how many ounces of 10. So isn't that like this one right here where they ask you for both? They're saying how many of each, right? Okay, whereas if you look at the next problem that I'm gonna assign, which is 37, it says how many liters of 25% must be mixed with what? With 4% of si the 60% stuff. So. So what they're asking there is they're saying that, hey, this is four right here. It's saying that the 60% has four, okay? It says it right here, four liters of 60%. And then they're asking how much of this one is there? Okay, so that's very similar to the problem number one on the worksheet where you, you are, they already tell you this one and then you gotta figure out this one. Whereas, um, Problem number 35 up here, again, I have a picture for that here as well. Since they asked for both, that means that this is going to be X. This is problem number 35. Uh, this is going to be X, and then this one's going to be what? This one's going to be Y right here, right? Because they asked for both. Okay, so some problems, again, you're going to have both variables here. Some problems, they're going to tell you what this one is, so you don't need a variable. You just need one here. Okay, and that's how it's going to work in your homework for the mixture problems, that is. Um, the mixture problems with the percentages. We're going to see other types of mixture problems in the next video. That's, those are going to be totally different. One more thing I want to point out before we conclude this video. Uh, the last problem uh, that I'm going to assign in the homework from, from these types of mixture problems, that is, is it says, how many ounces of pure orange juice and how many ounces of this citrus fruit drink that contains 5% fruit juice must be mixed to get 76 ounces of a fruit drink that's 25. I want to me mention here that pure, the word pure means what when it comes to juice? It means 100%. Pure means 100%. And so what they're talking about here is they're talking about mixing together 100% with 5% to get 76 Per, uh, 76 ounces that is 25 percent that makes sense right that the 25 percent is in between 105 isn't it because that's the mixture it says you mix to get 25 percent so 25 percent will be the mixture 100 percent and five percent will be the um two things that are being mixed okay so if you drew a picture in other words and I don't have a picture for this one, but uh, basically it would be 100% here, 5% here, and then the mixture would be 25%. Okay, so um, that concludes uh, the video on uh, the first half of the mixture discussion where you mix together two things with a percentage subquantity. We'll come back and this is something separate here. Uh, we'll come back in the next video with uh, where we do problems four through eight on the mixture worksheet, the mixture problem worksheet. So, but in the meantime, as usual, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, you take care and uh, have a good day and we'll see you back here for the second half of the mixture problems.